Alexander Armstrong. And a very warm welcome to this special arts and culture edition of Pointless Celebrities, the show that makes the biggest winners out of the lowest scorers. Let's meet today's Pointless Celebrities. <laughs> and couple number one. Oh, my name is Paul Morley. I've managed to remember that. And I am a music critic. Hi, I'm Annie Nicegirl, probably best known as Radio 1 DJ. Number two. I'm Katie Derham and I present the BBC Proms. She does. I'm uh, <laughs> Will Gonbutz and I'm the BBC's arts editor. Couple number three. Uh, I'm Tim Marlowe and I'm the artistic director of the Royal Academy. I'm Janet Street Porter, national treasure and big mouth. <laughs> and finally, couple number four. Hello, I'm Richard Stilgo. I used to write songs, now I mostly do Jeremy Corbyn look-alike competitions. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, I'm Mira Sayal. I dress up for a living and write occasionally. <laughs> Thank you very much indeed, all of you. A very warm welcome to Pointless. Lovely to have you here. We'll get to chat to each of you throughout the show as it goes along, of course. That just leaves one more person for me to introduce. Talk about highbrow. You should see his forehead when he stands up. It's my Pointless friend. It's Richard. Hiya. Hey, everybody. Good evening. Good evening, Xander. Good evening. How are you? Oh, do you know I mustn't grumble? That's good. It's very sophisticated this evening, isn't it? It's very classy. Isn't it? Arts and culture. I know. Represented by these good people here. Also represented, as you'll have spotted, by the tools of British arts and culture. A, a, a ruler. ruler. A, some scissors. <laughs> I have some sharpies in different colours. Blue tech, my friend. Good, yes. Blue tech. Uh, actually, one of the rounds today, I have curated myself in the head to head. Anyone who makes it that far, which I'm looking forward to you very much. Two very impressive people who've been on the show before. Mira got through to a final, uh, Katie got through to a final and won it as well. Oh, She's a jackpot winner. So no pressure there, <laughs> Richard and Will, but um, <laughs> if they don't get into the final, you would uh, you'd have to question have to their live. choice of partner. Yes, yeah. yes. Uh, well, thank you very much indeed, Richard. Now, as usual, all of today's questions have been put to 100 people before the show. Our contestants here are on the lookout for those all-important pointless answers. These are answers that none of our 100 people gave. Find one of those and we will add £250 to the jackpot. Now, as today's show is a celebrity special, each of our celebrities is playing for a nominated charity. We start off with a jackpot of £2,500. There it is. <laughs> right, if everyone's ready, let's play pointless. So all you have to remember is this. The pair with the highest score at the end of each round will be eliminated. So keep your scores as low as you possibly can and you should be fine. Best of luck to all four pairs. Our first category this evening is... Classical music. Can you all decide in your pairs? Who's going to go first? Who's going to go second? And whoever is going first, please step up to the podium. OK, and the question concerns... Classical composers in haiku. <laughs> you just excel yourself, don't you? Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, uh, on each board, we're <laughs> going to show you seven clues to seven different composers. Uh, the clues are written in the form of a Japanese haiku. That's a poem with five syllables, seven syllables, five syllables. OK, we are looking for the names of these composers hinted at by these haikus. Here's our first board of seven haikus, and we have got... Water Music Man, born in 1685, composed Messiah. H, composer best known... For Tosca, Turandot and Madame Butterfly, P. Salzburg-born child star, the play called Amadeus, was based on his life, M. In Brief Encounter, his concerto number two was famously used, R. La Traviata is by this composer whose English names Joe Green, V. German prodigy, he used the name Bartholdi, wrote the wedding march, M. His piece Bolero was seductively used in Bo Derek's film 10, R. See, this is fun. Isn't it? Here we go. I'm going to read those all again. Water Music Man, born in 1685, composed Messiah H, composer best known for Tosca, Turandot and Maritime Butterfly P, Salzburg born child star, the play called Amadeus was based on his life M. In Brief Encounter, his concerto number two was famously used R. La Traviata is by this composer whose English name is Joe Green V. German prodigy, he used the name Bartodi, wrote the wedding march M. His piece Bolero was seductively used in Bo Derek's film 10 R. Paul, welcome to Pointless. Thank you. Lovely to have you here. A music journalist. You were on the NME in the 70s and 80s. Yes. I would say when music, pop music was in its pomp. I mean, it's in its fullest pomp then. And yes. there you were at the, at the very face of it. 
at the NME. What, what are your memories of that? Well, we didn't time? cover this, that's for sure. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. I, I, actually, I remember meeting people like Lou Reed, Patti Smith, Debbie Howie when I was like in my early 20s at some mm. kind of weird university I was going to. So it was, a, it was a strange education, if you like. I bet. Yes. Would you say there's a type of music that you think is very much yours? Do you have one area that you specialise in and you know matters about? That's your I'm, domain. I, I'm always very anxious about doing that in case it seems nostalgic and the yeah. old thing you go through about saying, oh, it was better in the olden days. Well, I always... My favourite piece of music, in a way, is always what I'm about to hear next. And even if I'm very familiar with it, it always takes me by surprise. So I'm, I'm very allergic to being too sentimental. Yes, quite right. Um, so, now, Paul... What would you like to go for on this board? Um, I, I am actually going to go, not least because I'm a Dudley Moore fan, with the one at the end of the board there, uh, Bolero and Ravel. Ravel, says Paul. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Ravel. It's right. 37 for Ravel. Good start to the show. Yeah, probably the most famous, unfamous composer of all time, due to Torval and Dean. There you are. Who danced to Bolero. There you are. Which was by Ravel. By, there we are. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Uh, Will, welcome. Now, Thank as you, the arts editor of the BBC, yes. what, what are your main responsibilities? What, do you have to just be on hand in case an art, so an art story suddenly pops up? Yes, my main responsibility is having a producer who could look at a list like that and go, well, this is probably the pointless answer. And then I take on that answer and seem really authoritative about it. Because people think, God, that bloke with the weird hair, he knows loads about classical music. That's how it normally works. <laughs> and I'm not allowed to talk to Katie or anybody else, so it's like, oh, right, OK, exposed. Mm, yes. So, Will, who are the composers described by these haikus? Uh, oh, golly. Vivaldi. You are going to go for... Bevaldi, I'm guessing for the one with V. Uh, La Traviata, Vivaldi. Let's see if that's right. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Vivaldi. Oh, Will. I'm afraid not Vivaldi. Not Vivaldi. Not Vivaldi. Oh, Katie. I couldn't say anything. I couldn't say anything. Couldn't say anything. I'm afraid that's because you're 100 points. Yeah, not Vivaldi. I'm afraid you've done terrifically well with the initial. Uh, you've absolutely nailed that. <laughs> Thank you very much, Richard. Uh, Janet, welcome back to Pointless. Lovely to have you here. Thank you. Uh, I was reading something the other day that it was about Red Dwarf and it said it had been commissioned by you. Is that right? Oh, uh, I was in charge of it when I was a BBC executive. Back See, that in was... I was uh, you were a BBC executive? I don't yeah, remember that. Yeah, for ten that. years. I was for in charge years. of a load of shows like this, actually. Wow. <laughs> uh, when did you stop being a staffer at the BBC? Um, I went and started a, di a digital television company and then I edited The Independent on Sunday. So and I that moved was it? from television into being a newspaper editor. And then only in front of camera? Yeah, thereafter. then I've come back on television. Oh. Yeah, because I'm old. Uh, now, Janet, yes. how do you like our classical composers? It's fine by me. OK. I know all the answers, but this the is question good. is... Mm. ..to choose one not many people will have guessed. All right, I'm going to choose German prodigy. Mendelssohn. You're going to go for Mendelssohn. There we are. Let's see if it's right. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Mendelssohn. Look at that. There we are, 21 for Mendelssohn. Low score so far, Janet. Very well done. Well played, nice low score as well. Yeah, it comes from a, a suite of music he wrote for Midsummer Night's Dream. Uh, thanks very much indeed. Now, Mira. Welcome Hello. to Pointless. Lovely to have you here. The most extraordinary number of strings to your bow, Mira. You started off as a comedian, then an actor, uh, a writer, you've written dramas, you've written screenplays, you're occasional columnist, and I then discover you're a visiting professor at Oxford. Ah, oh, well, that was, yeah, that was for a year. It's one of those really nice sort of turn up, have a nice dinner and do three lectures a year jobs. So, of course, Very I said yes. Nice it, indeed. It was lovely. Did you call yourself Professor Sial? To all my Indian relatives, all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Did you get a nice card, an embossed card? I had one made. Very, very. <laughs> no, it was a really lovely Indian. year, actually. I enjoyed it. How nice. Um, this board, by the way, Mira, is all yours. If you wanted to go through it and fill in all our blanks, you'd be very welcome. Well, I think the one at the top, Handel. Uh, I think the second one down is Puccini. The third one, Salzburg, Born Child Star, is Mozart. The fourth one is the one I'm not sure about and is probably the lowest answer, and I think that's Rachmaninoff, but I'm not sure. 
I'll go for Puccini. You're going to go for Puccini for Turin Dot. Let's see if that's right. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Puccini. It's absolutely right. Well, 21 is our low score at this point. 40 is where you end up with Puccini. Not bad. Yeah, well, played Puccini, uh, later went on to be in The Godfather, won an Oscar for Scent of a Woman as well. Uh, let's go through the rest of these. Uh, he didn't, really. Uh, let's go through the rest of these. You're quite right, uh, Mira, it's Handel at the top there. We scored you 53. The Salzburg born... I like on this one, we say the play called Amadeus instead of the film called yeah, Amadeus, I mean, yes. to try and make us look more classy. More, Nicely yeah. done. It was Mozart, of course. Would have scored you 61. You would have been quite right with Rachman and off oh. Mira, but it's a risky one to take, to be honest. It's a, it's a good scorer, though. Would have only scored you 11 points. Uh, uh, yeah. yeah, and Will, the V, yeah, Joe Green, it's, it's Giuseppe Verdi. Of course. And oh, uh, would have scored you 33 points. That's unlucky. There we are. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. We're halfway through the round. Let's take a quick look at those scores. 21, Janet, well done. The best score of that pass, Janet and Tim. Top of the class at this stage, then 37s, where we find Paul and Annie. 40s, where we find Mira and Richard. And then Will and Katie oh, so were sorry. there on the <laughs> hundred. One of those moments. No, no oh, they so happened. Good. They happened to it us happened. all. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, Katie, you know what you have to do. I would say you are ideally placed for it, though, so good luck with that. We're right. going to come back down the line now. Can the second players please step up to the podium? OK, let's put seven more haikus up on the board, and here they are. We have got... Born in Gloucestershire, related to Charles Darwin, The Lark Ascending, VW, Swan Lake composer, along with a nutcracker and Sleeping Beauty, T, everyone knows his Montagues and Capulets from The Apprentice, P, Coppola used his Ride of the Valkyries in Apocalypse Now, W, All Together Now is a 90s hit based on his canon in D, P, his music was used in an advert for sliced bread, <laughs> New World Symphony, D, Shall hear in heaven his fifth symphony began with da 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 dum b. Let me read those again. Born in Gloucestershire, related to Charles Darwin, the Lark Ascending, VW, Swan Lake composer, along with a Nutcracker and Sleeping Beauty, T. Everyone knows his Montagues and Capulets from The Apprentice, P. Coppola used his Ride of the Valkyries in Apocalypse Now, W. All Together Now is a 90s hit based on his canon in D, P. His music was used in an advert for sliced bread, New World Symphony, D. And Shall Hear in Heaven, his fifth symphony began with Da 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 Dum, B. Richard, welcome. Very, very good to have you with us, Richard. Nice to be here. Um, so many interesting layers to your career. I mean, you started off writing songs, and then you became this fabulous lyricist. You've had hits on Broadway and the West End, but plenty of other things besides Starlight Express. Mm -hmm. Let's just also talk about tree houses. You build tree houses. Um, yes, when not writing songs or getting young people to write songs. Um, I used to build sheds, and mm -hmm. I thought I would aim higher. <laughs> <laughs> What's the, what's the most ambitious treehouse project you've done, Richard? Oh, it's in, we're in the middle of it. It sort of reaches out over the sea in Devon. Oh, fantastic. Uh, Richard, you are on 40. Our high score is a Katie and Will on 100, which means 59 or less is your target. I think, I mean, of those, I think Packle Bell's Cannon, fifth one down. I think I'll go for that. If You're going to go for Packle Bell. Let's see if that is right here is your red line. If you can get below that red line with Packle Bell, you are through to the next round. How many of our 100 people said it? Through you go to round two. Right. 14. <laughs> Look at that. Lowest score of the round so far. 54 is your total. Uh, yeah, all together now by the farm, of course. Big hit based on that. Thank you very much indeed, Richard Tim. A warm welcome to the Pointless. Artistic Director of the Royal Academy. When did you take over? Uh, two years ago. How's it been? It's like getting a giant cultural playground in which you can do whatever you want. And that's... You really can. You have free reign. Yeah, well, it's run by artists and architects who have an yeah. anarchic spirit, so, yeah, they want things to happen. That's good. I mean, really, could you strip out its collection and, and put it in aspic and put something else up? No, but I could put aspic in the main galleries as a form of sculptural installation, I suppose. Oh, very good. good very good indeed. So has it, has it changed course quite considerably under well, it's your... like an oil tanker. It's been 248 years. We're counting yeah. down to its yeah. 250th birthday. Of course, We're yeah. changing it slowly and very building on the past. slowly, turning it around. Very exciting indeed. Well, it's great to have you here, Tim. Um, there you yeah. are on 21, which means, thanks to Janet's lovely low score, 78 or less is your target. They're all probably after Paschal Belt. Reasonably knowable. So I'm going to just take a punt on 
something I love. So you might as well, if I'm gonna, if I'm gonna make a mess, I might as well do it for a piece of music I love. So we'll go for Vaughan Williams. Vaughan Williams says, Tim, here is your red line. If you get below this with Vaughan Williams, you are through to round two. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Vaughan Williams. It's right, and you're through. Look at that, 28. Very well done indeed. 49 is your total. Very well played, yeah. Uh, Charles Darwin was his great uncle. And the Lark Ascending it won the, uh, the Classic FM Hall of Fame, as I think it does most years. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Uh, Katie, welcome back to Pointless. Thank you, Zander. former Pointless laureate. Um, so, running the proms, I mean, not quite running the proms, but you, you know, you are, you are, it is your domain, the proms. I, I'd like to think the Royal Albert Hall is my summer home. And how many nights of the run are you actually there for? I have to be absolutely honest, the only person who goes to every night is the boss. Um, but I try and get to at least, at least a couple of weeks if I can. Probably that's what it sort of works nice. out. But it's such yes. a lovely... I mean, was this sort of by design? I mean, was, were people sort of edging you towards that or did it just evolve that way that you, you ended up...? you know what? Up? It was one of those lovely bits of sort of career good luck when somebody yeah. said to me, do you fancy presenting the odd prom? And I went, do you know what? That sounds great, having always loved them when I was a kid yeah, and yeah. listened to them a lot all my life. And, uh, and then they said, actually, do you want to do quite a lot of them? And I went, even better. Yeah. So it's been very, very, very happy. Wonderful. Now, Katie, this is going to be interesting. Yeah. We just need a nice low score from you. 36 or less, let's say. OK. Um, I'm going to go for Prokofiev, number three. Prokofiev, says Katie. No red line for you, I'm afraid, as you're the high scorers, but let's see what happens when we say Prokofiev for the Montagues and Capulets. It's right. <laughs> Our lowest score of the round, of the whole round, has been 14. Oh, and you pass it. Look at that, down to six, Katie. <laughs> there we are. The lowest score of the round. Takes your total up to 106. Well played, Katie, giving yourself a chance there. Yeah, it was actually written for The Apprentice. <laughs> yes. It was commissioned as the theme music mm. to that. Uh, thank you very much, Richard. <laughs> we are now Annie. We come to you. You are still at Radio 1. Yep. You're yep. still at Radio. How long have you been there? A long time. And you do, you do a slot from 3 till 5 a.m.? No, no, 1 till 4 now. Oh, it's 1 till 4? Yeah, 1 a.m. to 4 a.m. But everybody listens to it the next day on the iPlayer, to be honest. Please tell me it's pre-recorded. Sometimes. Sometimes. <laughs> I'm sorry to be so, so vague and cautious. This show, to me, I've watched it and thinking, I don't know how these people do it. Someone asked me, name all four Beatles, I'm in problems. <laughs> so I once actually turned down a job reviewing classical music for a magazine, because I said, no, I don't know about it. So, have you said all that? OK, your stage is now set, Annie. Uh, yeah, do yeah. You want to, do you want to talk us through this board I at all? I think the only thing I'll do is say something very... Sorry, Paul, about this. Um, uh, Pastor Bell would have been the, my lovely choice. This is, but, so I'm going to have to go very, very obvious and say, first one, Nick. Yes. It hasn't been chosen. Hasn't been chosen. So I hope it's Tchaikovsky. Do. Tchaikovsky, yeah. says Annie. Here is your red line, Annie. If you can get below that with Tchaikovsky, you are through to the next round. How many of our 100 people said Tchaikovsky? It's right. You're through. Look at that. Very good economy of score there. 58, taking your total up to 95. Well played, Annie. Good news is you're through. The bad news is the next round is name the Beatles. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> now, one for the right of the Valkyries. Wagner. Wagner. Would have scored you 39, went on to appear on X Factor many, many years later. <laughs> uh, the Abbot for Sliced Bread? Uh, Dvorak. Dvorak, yeah. Or do you say Dvorak? Dvorak, yeah. Oh, that's so classy. Uh, it was played by, of course, played by Teddy Savalas on television. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, da 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 dum. Beethoven. Beethoven, absolutely. And that would have scored you 45. So the best answer on the board is uh, Prokofiev. Well played, Katie. Very good indeed. Uh, thanks very much indeed. At the end of our first round, we have to say goodbye to our high scorers. And our high score is unbelievable. I, uh, I feel so I bad about <laughs> no, well, that. No, it's just seriously, one of those don't go moments. You go, oh my God. You know, I know it's, like, it's like a goalkeeper and the ball just rolls through your legs into the back of the goal and it's the European Cup final. Oh, no, and no. you've got Ronaldo up front. <laughs> it's like, oh God. So I'm oh. so sorry, Katie. It was just one of those moments. It happens all the time. Um, and I know you know, you're 99 and a half times out of 100, you'll know that. Um, but, you know, you, between you both, you had the lowest score and the highest score. So very, very well <laughs> yes, done. Well, you can share the accolades. Yeah, yeah, we must feel good about that. Yeah.
come back and play again, please, Katie and Will. It's been lovely having you here. Thanks, Thanks so much. Katie and Will. <laughs> but for the remaining three pairs, it's now time for round two. And so we are down to three pairs, and at the end of this round, we'll have to go down to two pairs. Best of luck to all three pairs. Our category for round two this evening is... Famous people. Can you all decide in your pairs? Who's going to go first, who's going to go second? And whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. <laughs> OK. And the question concerns... Celebrities in the 1970s. Richard. Yeah, we're going to show you uh, a board now of pictures of celebrities, but all the photographs were taken in the 1970s. Uh, can you tell us the most obscure of these faces, please? Excellent. Thank you very much indeed. So we're going to put an image up with all these faces on. Uh, you just have to shout out the name of anyone whose face appears there. Let's see who is up. Ooh, there they are. There they are. Famous people back in the 70s. So... Annie. Yeah. Annie, who would you like to go for? Michael Caine. Michael Caine, says Annie. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Michael Caine. He's right. 67. <laughs> 67 for Michael Caine. Uh, and that, uh, that image there from 1978. Thank you very much indeed. Now, Tim. I was hoping to see Janet on this. Yeah, I could be on that. Why am I How do you know there? she's not? <laughs> well, not unless I'm in drag. <laughs> I... Mary Peters. Mary Peters, says Tim. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Mary Peters. It is Mary Peters. 67's our only score, and you pass that. We have a new low score, and it's 15. Very well done, Tim. Yeah, the wonderful Dame Mary Peters there on the top row. She's been on the show a few times, hasn't mm. she? She's lovely. We love Mary Peters. She doesn't really like you calling her Dame Mary, though. You have to call her Mary. <laughs> Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Uh, now then, Richard. Oh, uh, um, Just on the basis that it's black and white, so probably older than the others, mm. I'm going for Jim Callaghan. Jim Callaghan, says Richard. Let's see how many of our 100 people spotted Jim Callaghan. Well, it's right. 67's our high score, 15 our low. You pass the high. You pass the low. Down to 12. Very well done indeed, Richard. Lowest score so far. 12 for Jim Callaghan. Yeah, uh, Labour Prime Minister, of course, Jim Callaghan. When he was Chancellor, he was the first person not to use the famous red box. He replaced it with a sort of brown valise. But then they went back to it after Went back to that. Mm. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much indeed, Richard. Uh, so, we are halfway through the round. Let's have a little recap of our scores. 12, the best score of the past. Very well done indeed, Richard. Richard and Mira looking strong at this juncture, as I'd say are Tim and Janet on 15. 67, quite high up there, Annie. So, Paul, we need a nice low score from you, if you can find one when we get back to you. But good luck with that. We're going to come back down the line now. Can the second players please step up to the podium? <laughs> OK, now then, Mira. Have a good look at that board. You're going to aim for a sort of 54 or less kind of score. Gosh, it's really tricky. I know most of them. It's just... I to guess who people wouldn't know. I'll go for Martin Sheen. Martin Sheen, says Mira. Here is your red line. If you can get below this red line with Martin Sheen, you are through to the head-to-head. -head. How many of our 100 said Martin Sheen? It's right. And you're through. Down it goes. Still going down. 15. Another lovely low score. 27 is your total. Well played, Mira. That's a nice photo of him, isn't it? Martin Sheen. Mm. Of course, he was in Apocalypse Now, which we mentioned in our first mm. round. Uh, thank you very much indeed. Uh, so, Janet. Yes. Janet, who would you like to go for? You're on 15, which means 51 or less is your target. Jodie Foster. Jodie Foster, says Janet, here is your red line. Get below this red line with Jodie Foster and you're into the head-to-head. -head. How many of our 100 people said it? Ooh, 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 Jodie Foster. Scores 100 points, takes your total up to 115. Yeah, no Jodie Foster there, I'm afraid. Uh, Janet, I'll give all the correct answers at the end of the pass. 
thank you very much indeed. Ooh, well, that's thrown everything up in the air a little bit there, Paul. Giving you a bit of a lifeline. Mm. There you are on 67. 47 or less gets you through. 47 or less. You're obviously, you're, you're, you're Bobby Moore, you're Julie Andrews. I was going to take a risk down at the bottom there, but I don't know whether I need to now or do I. I'm going to take the risk, actually. I'm going to go for Joyce Grenfell. Joyce Grenfell, says Paul. <laughs> How many of our 100 people said Joyce Grenfell? Is it right? I'm afraid Joyce Grenfell incorrect. That scores you 100 points. Takes your total up to 167. Yeah, sorry, Paul. Which one, which one were you thinking of for Joyce Grenfell? Black and white at the bottom row. Yeah, absolutely. It does look like her, doesn't it? Do you know who that is? It's a pointless answer as well. It's Margaret Beckett. Ah. Uh... <sighs> Janet, which one did you think was Jodie Foster? Well, it's, I know now it's Maggie Smith. Maggie Smith would have scored you 12 if you'd said that. Before Maggie Smith, there's Cher. Cher, yeah. She would have scored you 51. Next to Mary Peters is Michelle Pfeiffer. She would have scored you eight points. And, of course, we've got Muhammad Ali. Ali. He would have scored you 59. Seb Coe yeah. on the end of that row would have scored 36. Travolta, of course, there. 74 for John Travolta, the biggest scorer of all. Eric Morecambe would have scored 42. Only 42 points. Uh, then Debbie Harry. Uh, she would have scored you 31. Bobby Moore there would have scored 22. And then we've got Julie Andrews, 27. And Goldie Horn scored you 39. Thanks very much indeed. So we're at the end of our second round of the pair. We're sending home with their high score of 167. Paul and Annie, I'm afraid it's you. It's been such a treat having you here. Please come and play again. Um, but uh, meantime, thank you so much. Paul and Annie, brilliant. <laughs> but for our remaining two pairs, it is now time for our head-to-head. Many, many congratulations, Mira and Richard, Janet and Tim. You are now one step closer to the final and a chance to play for that jackpot, which currently stands at £2,500. <laughs> so here's where we decide who goes through to the final and plays for that jackpot, and we do it by making you go head-to-head. -head. But you play as teams here, which I think is nice. You can chat before you give your answers, and the first pair to win two questions will be playing for that jackpot. Very best of luck to both pairs. Let's play the head-to-head. Here is your first question, and it concerns Ivor Novello Award winners. Richard. We're going to play you five clips now from songs that have won uh, the Ivor Novello Award for best song, musically and lyrically. Just need you to name the artist you're listening to, please. Very best of luck. Excellent. Let's have a listen to our five excerpts, and here they come. We have got A. Only wish that you were here You know I'm seeing it so clear I've been afraid Show you how I really feel Admit to some of those bad mistakes I've made Here is B Turn your face away No matter cause there's Something inside so strong I know that I can make it Though you're doing me wrong you see? Oh, I stumble and fall, but I give you it all. I am a woman in love, and I do anything to get you into my world and hold you within. <laughs> Here is D. And here is E. I want to look inside your head, yes, I do. I've seen all your qualifications you got from the Sorbonne and the painting you stole from Picasso. There we are, Mira and Richard. You will be going first because you're our low scorers. What would you like to go for? I think you're going to blame me. You choose. Right, all right. Go on your instincts. Um, my dear friend Peter Scallon was always mistaken for E. Peter Sarsted. 
Peter sauced it. Peter sauced it. Uh, Janet and Tim. Oh. We have to do Jerry Rafferty. All right, all right, Tim. We have to do Jerry Rafferty because it's the only one we're certain of. <laughs> and that's that was of course D. Oh. D. I hope I can't remember what order you played them, but I think it's D. Yeah. <laughs> so we have Peter Sarstedt and we have Jerry Rafferty. Mira and Richard said Peter Sarstedt for E. Let's see if that's right. Let's see how many of our 100 people said it. It's right. Look at that, Peter Sarstedt down to five. Very good indeed. Uh, Janet and Tim have gone for Jerry Rafferty for D. Let's see if that's right. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Jerry Rafferty. It's right. Ooh, very close. 16 for Jerry Rafferty. Very well done, Mira and Richard. After one question, you are up 1 0. Yeah, there is an answer actually that would have beaten Peter Sarst. It's a very good answer, but there's a, there's a lower score. Um, let's listen to A first. David Gray. David Gray, yeah, Babylon. That would have scored you nine points. Uh, and the second one... Labby Sifri. ..is Labby Sifri, and that's the best answer up there. Would have scored you two points. Would have been a terrific wow. answer. And the only other one left... Yeah, Barbara Streisand. Barbara Streisand. Biggest scorer of all there. She would have scored you 20 points. There we are. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. So here comes your second question. Janet and Tim, you get to answer it first, but you need to win it to stay in the game, so good luck. Our second question is all about... drawings of films. Richard. Yeah, I'm very glad we got someone with a very professional and very keen appreciation of art uh, with us today, with Tim, because people often ask what I'm doodling on the show, so the producers asked if I would draw a series of blockbuster films, <laughs> which I have done. Uh, Hallelujah. Hall, finally, uh, you simply have to tell uh, us which films I have drawn here, and Tim afterwards will just have a little chat about the style, maybe about where I go next, <laughs> or, you know, that kind of stuff. The Who, summer exhibition. Th that sort beckons. of thing, and, you know, who's the best person to represent me, whether some are more contemporary, or... You, yeah. You'll see when you see the work. It has a... Um, I, I would call myself an outsider artist, but uh, there's all sorts of other influences in there. So five films, I essentially. can't wait to see What these. are they? Wow, it gets better. Uh, let's reveal our five drawings, and here they come. We've got... Oh, the director's name is underneath. <laughs> A, 1977, George Lucas. Uh, <laughs> B, 2009, James Cameron. Um, C is 1969, Peter Collinson. Something to think about there, isn't there? That is. <laughs> Um, D is 1975, <laughs> Steven Spielberg. <laughs> and E is 2009, Pete Doctor and Bob Peterson. Makes you think, doesn't it? Doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> there we are. So Janet and Tim will go first. Yeah, all right. Do you think okay. so? Um, we're going to go for C. Um, the Italian job. The Italian job. Janet and Tim say the Italian job. Now, Mira and Richard, would you like to talk us through the board and then select the one you want to submit? A is one of the Star Wars films, but Star Wars. B, any idea about B? Uh, you know, I can see it in my mind. It's about blue aliens. D Stop. is obviously Jaws. And E, which is the one I think we're going for, is one of the most beautiful films ever made, Up. Mm. Up. So, we have The Italian Job and we have Up. Janet and Tim said The Italian Job for C. Let's see if it's right. Let's see how many of our 100 people said it. It's right. 32. <laughs> 32 for The Italian Job. Mira and Richard, meanwhile, have gone for Up. For E, let's see if up's right. Let's see how many of our 100 people said up. Ah. 40. Very close indeed, but very well done. Janet and Tim, you're back in the game after two questions. It's one all. That was fun. That was fun. Uh, yeah, I wasn't happy with the house, I'll be honest. 
the Italian job, you notice there's a lot of detail in that thing. Yeah. You see yeah. I've got the gold in the back of the coach. Yeah. 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 Everyone in the coach is looking unhappy. Yes. <laughs> Apart from the driver who looks determined. Yes, he does look determined. You know, it's really quite something. What's well, C-3PO holding? He's not, hold, he's not holding anything. Toffee apple or something? That's the little bit in the middle of his chest. His one pack. Um, so, yeah, that is Star Wars, the Lovely. first one. I don't know if you didn't get that. Darth Vader ships at the front there. And the Death Star, uh, which is why it says danger, because it's a very dangerous place. 88 points for that, which goes to show the photorealism of some of my work there, Tim. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, the next one is... Avatar. Avatar. Is that one? Yeah, the James... Uh, Mine, yeah. It's, uh, yeah, 30 points. There's some blue people in some trees. They've all got different hair. Look at that. Uh, and <laughs> do you know D? It's uh, a Steven that's... Spielberg movie. I'm surprised you've gone for such a small boat. Surely you're going to... Sorry. Well, so, yeah, if yeah. we do this round again, we're going to need a bigger boat, I think. Has that man just got one arm? Yes, from a previous shark attack. Here's a guy... <laughs> the message of this thing is this guy doesn't learn. <laughs> Jaws, isn't it? It is Jaws, it's yeah, you've done few. really well there. Good. Um, and that would have scored 82. There's 18 people looking at that going, now what is it? Is that... <laughs> now is that, tell me, is that Towering Inferno? <laughs> that was it, I enjoyed that. Yeah, I did too. I've got the originals here if you want to buy them. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Uh, so here comes your third question. Whoever wins this third question goes through to the final and plays for that jackpot for their charities. So uh, best of luck to both pairs. Our third question this evening is all about words added to the Oxford Dictionary since 2010. Richard. Yeah, simply going to show you five definitions now of words that have been added to the dictionary since 2010. We're also going to give you the first letter of that word and the number of letters in it. Whichever team wins this point, of course, is going through to play for the jackpot. So very best of luck, everybody. Thanks very much indeed. Let's reveal our five new words. And here they come. We've got an electronic folder in which emails received by an individual are held. Five, I, bad-tempered or irritable as a result of lack of food. Six, H, a photograph taken of one's own face, typically with a smartphone. Six, S, a loose-fitting one-piece leisure garment covering the torso and legs. Six, O, spoiler picture by unexpectedly appearing in the camera's field of view. Nine, P. I'm going to read those all again. An electronic folder in which emails received by an individual are held. 5i, bad-tempered or irritable as a result of lack of food. 6h, a photograph taken of one's own face, typically with a smartphone. 6s, a loose-fitting one-piece leisure garment covering the torso and legs. 6o, and spoiler picture by unexpectedly appearing in the camera's field of view. 9p. Mira and Richard will go first. Mira's just told me a word which I've never heard, so it must be right. <laughs> I might be wrong, though. I might be wrong. Go on, have a go. Oh, really? Yeah. One, two, three, four. Hangry. 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 I think I have made that. Say Mira and Richard. Good word. Hangry. Should now, Janet word. and Tim, it's over to you. Talk us through as much of that board mm. as you'd like to. Right. The first one's inbox. The third one's... Selfie. Selfie. The next one's a onesie. And then this photo bomb. Yeah, the bottom one is photo bomb, all so, one word. So should we... It's quite difficult. Onesie. onesie. You're going to go for onesie. I'm working on the principle that people are more likely to spell it wrongly. <laughs> but with a W. OK. <laughs> um... <laughs> so... Mira and Richard have gone for hangry. Let's see how many of our 100 people said hangry. I've made it up. It's right. It's oh. right. Hangry is right. That. <laughs> your first point this afternoon. 16. Oh. That's a good score. <laughs> Janet and Tim, meanwhile, have gone for onesie. Let's see how many of our 100 people said onesie. It's right. Oh, there we are, 38. Very well done indeed, Mira and Richard. After three questions, you're through to the final 2-1. Yeah, very well played. Actually, the best two answers on the board given by both teams there, so very well played. Hangry, uh, which is hungry and angry. That's the most recent one to have been added in 2015. Uh, inbox would have scored you 42. Selfie got a huge score, 85 for Selfie. Ooh. And it is photobomb at the bottom there, and that would have scored you 49. 
Thank you very much indeed. Richard, so the pair leaving us at the end of the head-to-head -head round. I'm afraid it's Janet and Tim. It's been lovely having you both here. Thank you so much for coming and uh, raising the brow of our programme. <laughs> and uh, we'll see you again soon, I hope. Janet and Tim, wonderful. <laughs> but for Mira and Richard, it's now time for our pointless final. <laughs> Congratulations, Mira and Richard. You have fought off all the competition and you have won our coveted pointless trophy. You now have a chance to win our pointless jackpot. And at the end of today's show, the jackpot is standing at £2,500. <laughs> now, uh, what would you like to see come up? Do you feel between you, you've, you've got most bases covered? Are there I any really things you wouldn't like to see? Sport. Sport? Really? Sport. Go on, sport. Something, something with music involved somewhere. OK, that would be good. Today's selection reads like this. JFK, British female solo artists, UK and Ireland Euro 2016 squads, Stephen Sondheim. I know what JFK stands for. It's an airport. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, it's where do you want to go? Do you know, I honestly think you should choose because I think... <sighs> The two musical categories, you're going to have the edge on me anyway, so I think you should go for the one you feel most comfortable with. If I was standing here all alone, I would go for Stephen Sondheim. OK. You're going to go for Stephen Sondheim? I'm, uh, yeah, with no confidence at all. Well, that's fine. Richard? Yeah, very best of luck. I hope one of these uh, questions suits you. We are looking for any of the following, please. Uh, we're looking for any of the songs from Gypsy, uh, from the 2015 uh, London cast recording, any of the cast of the 2014 film Into the Woods, according to IMDb, or any of the songs from the original cast recording, the original Broadway cast recording of West Side Story from 1957. So songs in Gypsy, cast of Into the Woods, or songs in West Side Story. Very, very best of luck. Thank you very much, Richard. Now, as always, you've got up to one minute to come up with three answers, and all you need to win that jackpot is for just one of those answers to be pointless. Are you ready? OK. Yeah, OK, let's put 60 seconds up on the clock. There they are. Your time starts now. Gypsy, anything? Uh, only the most obvious songs. Which is? Uh, Mama Rose song and... Um... I would go for, out of Gypsy, I would go for If Mama Was Married. OK. But I don't, you know, because it's the only song I can remember. Roses, Everything's coming up roses, I think people will know. Cast of Into the Woods. Cast of Into the Roads. James Corden was in it. That's a little obscure. Yeah, that's good. Was I he think, the baker? I think, yeah. OK. Yeah, Pretty good, sure good call. Um, songs in West Side Story that people won't know. Stick to your own kind. Oh, oh, good. Yes. I think that might... Stick to your own kind is good, yes. I think... Are we now? Are we going to do better than that? Stick to your own kind. James Corden for Into the Woods. Anything, anybody else in Into the Woods who wasn't Meryl Streep? <laughs> um, Ten seconds oh, left. Songs American in Act. Gypsy. No. Is that, if Mama was married, James Corden, and what was it? Stick to your own kind. Stick to your own kind. There we are. We're the minute finishes right at that point. That's a sign, isn't it? Three good answers, surely. What are you going to go for? Stick to your own kind from West Side Story. Um, if Mama was married from Gypsy. Lovely, if Mama was married. And because he's so huge at the moment, um, James Corden, who we think was in Into the Woods. Into the Woods, James Corden. Of those three, which is your best shot at a pointless answer, do you think? What do you reckon? I have I, th I think idea. her, Stick to Your Own Kind, is the best one. Let's put Stick to Your Own Kind last. Least likely to be pointless? I think a lot of people will know James Corden was in Into the Woods, so let's put him first. OK, James Corden. And, and in then the middle, we have if Mama was married, if Mama was married in the middle. Lovely. OK, well, let's put those answers up on the board in that order, then, and here they are. We have got James Corden, if Mama was married, and stick to your own kind. Well, I have to say, I know nothing, but in my opinion, those are three excellent answers. Let's hope at least one of those is pointless. If one of those does win the jackpot for you, which uh, charities are you playing for? Mira. I'm playing for a fantastic charity, the Alzheimer's Society. Excellent. Richard? Uh, the Orpheus Centre, which is a performing arts centre for young disabled people. Very good indeed. <laughs> Fingers crossed. One of these answers will win that jackpot for you to split between those excellent charities. Your first answer was James Corden. In this case, we were looking for cast members from Into the Woods. Let's find out if he's right and if he's pointless, if he's both of those things, you will win £2,500. Let's see how many of our 100 said James Corden. It's right. 
All that has to happen now is for James Corden to take us all the way down to zero, and your charities will be richer between them to the tune of £2,500. Down we go through the teens. Ooh, 12. Ooh. Not bad. For a first answer that you thought everyone would know, 12 is not a bad score at all. Annoyingly, we only take pointless answers in this round. So we move on to your next answer, which was if Mama was married. In this case, we were looking for songs from Gypsy. Let's find out how many of our 100 people said if Mama was married. If it's pointless, it wins you £2,500. It's right. James Corden took us all the way down to 12. If Mama was married, now takes us down through the 30s, through the 20s. We're into the teens. Down we go. We passed 12. Into single figures. Still going down. Still going down. Down we go. Oh, no! Oh. <laughs> One person! Who is this person? Oh. They're on every week, this person. <laughs> oh. That was brilliant. What a great answer. Oh. Great score as well. Just annoying that it's not pointless. So we move very quickly on to your third and final answer. Stick to your own kind. This is the one that you both felt was probably your best shot at a pointless answer. So let's find out. Anyway, it has to be right, then it has to be pointless. If it's both of those things, you leave here with £2,500 for your charities. How many of our 100 people said stick to your own kind from West Side Story? Oh, no! It must be one of your own kind. Oh, no! I'm afraid. An incorrect answer there. Oh, that must have been so close. I'm so sorry. Yes. Um, I'm afraid that you didn't manage to find that all-important pointless answer, so you don't win today's jackpot for your charities. However, as it is a charity special, we are going to donate £500 to each celebrity pair right. for oh, their respective thank charities. You. It's thank been you. such a treat having you here. Wonderful. So, well done. You get a pointless trophy each there, so in recognition of that. <laughs> um, Richard. Yeah, very hard to play the jackpot round better than that and not win, is the truth. It's terrific stuff. Very well done. Uh, stick to your own kind. The title is A Boy Like That. Oh. Oh, yeah. And it was a pointless answer as well. Oh. And there's only, there are only three pointless answers for West Side Story, so you, you, you thought of the right song. Yeah. Also, while you were talking, so there's only two songs that score points for Gypsy, and you mentioned Everything's Coming Up Roses, which was also a pointless answer. Get away. Oh, yeah, it was us. indeed. I'll take you through all the pointless like answers the now. Song, Most famous song in the show. Uh, there's only two songs that scored any points at all for Gypsy. Only two songs. Everything else was pointless. Let's take a look at some of the pointless answers now. There it is. Look, Everything's Coming Up Roses. Some people, together, wherever we go, you've got to get a gimmick. Uh, the only ones that scored points were if Mama was married and let me entertain you. They're the only ones scoring points in that. Every single other answer is a wow. pointless answer. The cast of Into the Woods. Now, some famous names up here. Uh, Nick Crosby was a pointless answer. Uh, Christine Baranski, Francis de la Tour, Simon Russell Beale. Everyone in that film was pointless apart from Meryl Streep and James Corden. Johnny Depp, Emily Blunt, Anna Kendrick, uh, Tracy Ullman and Chris Pine. Everyone else is a pointless answer. And as I say, only three pointless answers in West Side Story. A boy like that. I have a love and one hand, one heart. Very, very well done if you've got any of those at home. And that was terrifically unlucky in the studio. Well played. Oh, you kind of won. In our, you were the winners of our hearts. No, we got kind of won. That's what <laughs> we did wrong. <laughs> you, you, had, you had an answer that would have won. Well, it's been lovely having you here. Thank you so much, Mira and Richard. Uh, please join us next time when we'll be putting more obscure knowledge to the test on Pointless. Meanwhile, it's goodbye from Richard. Goodbye. And it's goodbye from me. Goodbye.